Good morning, girls and boys. Uh, well, happy Monday. Uh, like I said on Friday, this week is sadly the last week of our book reading. Uh, but because it's our last week, uh, I decided to find five books that I think are especially good. Now, it doesn't mean that the books that we read previously weren't good, but I think these five books are very special uh, because either uh, I think their story is really good or maybe their artwork is really good, you know, because we like pictures too, or maybe because it has a really good message. Uh, so whatever the case may be, uh, I hope you will like the five books of this week. Uh, let's start with the first one of this week. All right, the book I have for you today is called Gorilla. Hmm, all right, there is not much I should tell you because I think it's a fascinating story. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, let's make sure you can see all right. All right, how about that? Good, all right. Hannah loved gorillas. She read books, she read books about gorillas, she watched gorillas on television, and she drew pictures of gorillas, but she had never seen a real gorilla. Hmm. So here's a girl, Hannah. Her father didn't have time to take her to see one at the zoo. He didn't have time for anything. He's a busy man. Now, you can see a closer picture. That's Hannah's father. You know, he looks pretty serious. And he looks like he is a man who is quite busy. Even when he is with Hannah, doesn't look like he spends a whole lot of time getting to know Hannah. He went to work every day before Hannah went to school, and in the evening, he worked at home. When Hannah asked him a question, he would say, Not now. I'm busy. Maybe tomorrow. So, that's kind of what Hannah, uh, that is what it's like for Hannah growing up with her dad. But the next day, he was always too busy. Not now, maybe on the weekend, he would say. But on the weekend, he was always too tired. They never did anything together. So, Hannah is pretty alone. The night before her birthday, Hannah went to bed tingling with excitement. She had asked her father for a gorilla. In the middle of the night, Hannah woke up and saw a very small parcel, parcel at the foot of the bed. It was a gorilla, but it was just a toy. And like that. There's also her picture that she drew of the gorilla. <laughs> she likes gorilla so much that even her lampshade is a gorilla. Then something amazing happened. Hannah threw the gorilla into a corner with her other toys and went back to sleep. In the night, something amazing happened. The gorilla grew bigger and bigger and bigger and so big that even the little doll got scared. And now the gorilla is right in front of Hannah. Now, even though Hannah loves gorillas, you gotta imagine that it's gotta be pretty scary too. So, Hannah was frightened. Don't be frightened, Hannah. Said the gorilla, I won't hurt you. I just wonder if you would like to go to the zoo. The gorilla had such a nice smile that Hannah wasn't afraid. I would love to, she said. They both crept downstairs and Hannah put on her coat. The gorilla put on her father's hat and coat, a perfect fit, he whispered. They opened the front door and went outside. Come on then, 
Hannah, said the gorilla, and he gently lifted her up. Then they were off, swinging through the trees toward the zoo. Apparently, he could fly too, and that startled the little cat. When they arrived at the zoo, it was closed, and there was a high wall all around. Never mind, said the gorilla. Up and over, they went straight to the primates. Hannah was thrilled. So many gorillas! The gorilla took Hannah to see the ar、uh, hmm orangutan. And a chimpanzee. She thought they were beautiful, but sad. And sad probably because they were locked up. What would you like to do now? The gorilla asked. I would love to go to the movies, said Hannah. So they did. And they were watching a super gorilla. A gorilla that dresses up like Superman. Afterward, they walked down the street together. That was wonderful," said Hannah. "But I'm hungry now." "Okay," said the gorilla. "We'll eat." And they did. Ice cream looks like raspberries, bananas, cheesecake, or maybe just cake, ketchup, and pudding, and pies, and I don't know, cupcakes. Lots of goodies. Lots and lots of goodies. Time for home? Asked the gorilla. Hannah nodded, a bit sleepily. A bit sleepily. They danced on the lawn. Hannah had never been so happy. Look at that. The gorilla is a gentle giant. You better go in now, Hannah. Said the gorilla. See you tomorrow. Really? Asked Hannah. The gorilla nodded and smiled. The next morning, Hannah woke up and saw the toy gorilla. She smiled. So maybe it was just a dream. Hannah rushed downstairs to tell her father what had happened. "Happy birthday, love," he said. "Do you want to go to the zoo?" Hannah looked at him. Her busy father. Ask Hannah if she wants to go to the zoo, and she was very happy. Now, boys and girls, obviously that was a story, and we know that a gorilla probably will never, you know, talk like us, or much less, you know, to take us to the zoo, but. I do like how in the story the imaginary the imaginary gorilla was very kind and very loving and very caring and doing everything that was in Hannah's best interest. Remember, Hannah has a very busy father that doesn't usually spend any time with her, and she longs for that caring person in her life. And the imaginary gorilla did just that. Now imagine if we can act more like. The imaginary, the imaginary gorilla,、uh, in the lives,、um, you know, in our lives for the people around us, you know, if we're also as loving, gentle, and caring to people around us, wouldn't we make the world a better place? And wouldn't we make the lives of all those around us better? Now, I hope you like the story, and I hope you will also carry this message with you. Now, come back tomorrow, and I have another great book for you. Bye.